Hi everyone, I'm Anna Berry for New to the Street right here at the New York Stock Exchange and we're going to be speaking with Lantern Pharma. It's an AI company that's creating cancer medications that are actively dosing patients currently now through clinical trials and I'm so happy to welcome its CEO, Pana Sharma. Welcome to New to the Street. Thanks. Great to be here. Thank you, Anna. All right. So before we dive in, talk a little bit about what Lantern Pharma is really doing that's shaking up drug development. Yeah, drug development is very expensive, very risky, and takes a long time. I mean, it's a, it's a perfect problem area for data and AI. And that's what we've done. You know, what we've done is we've accomplished bringing three drugs into clinical trials in the course of the last few years. We've got 12 active programs across a wide range of cancers. But the great thing about all this is that we've done it using AI. We've created a platform that now does this better than any one scientist, any five scientists, or any team of hundreds of scientists, we've created an AI platform that can do the work of thousands of scientists, again, focused on cancer. And that's really a real great testament to our team. Absolutely, and you were breaking it down for me earlier. I would like for you to do that with our viewers because it really made a lot of sense. And what you're speaking of is the radar. That is your AI platform and how you are using AI for good. Yeah. I mean. Our team is 100% focused on one problem. And the problem is that we all come from backgrounds where we've done a lot of work in cancer. Our, our CFO was a president of a cancer company. Our you know, chief scientific officer was a director at the uh, National Cancer Institute. And so everyone really believes that cancer drugs have to be made faster and cheaper. There's no solution to making drugs less expensive than, guess what? making them less expensive, right? And people laugh about that. And like, look, the clothes that you and I wear, maybe not yours, but my clothes, they cost the same amount of money that they did 40 years ago, maybe even less. Everything is less. The semiconductors that are powering this interview and the technology, trading on the floor here in the New York Stock Exchange, lower. But why do drugs cost more? AI, software and computing has transformed every industry. It's finally at the point now because the problem is really complicated, right? How do you create a drug? How do you start? What's the data that you need? How do you recurse through this data? But now guess what? We have technology that actually can do it. And in cancer, it's really challenging because the experts are all over the globe. You can't even get an appointment with them. I was talking to um, a rare cancer expert at Cornell they told me we we're taught working on a project together. They couldn't even get to the expert for like two and a half, three weeks. Is that crazy? Critical timeline is critical at this point, but you, you are actively dosing patients. So let's, the proof in the pudding is in the eating of it. So what are some of the key takeaways from your latest clinical trial results? Yeah. So we have a drug called LP184. It's a synthetically lethal molecule, small molecule. Um, we developed it in record time. We used AI to actually optimize the molecule. We used AI to find indications where there are no drugs approved, like a rare pediatric cancer, no drug approved. And our drug seems to really work. And in traditional process, this could have taken years to figure out. We did it with the National Cancer Institute. We put a paper out on it in atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumors. And we did this in a matter of months. So months versus years. Correct. And now we're actually dosing patients now this trial, we did 63 patients across a big range of, of tumors. The focus in the trial was really to find how much of this drug can we give to patients? What's the right dosing and how much is gonna be safe? Drugs can be very dangerous, right? Especially powerful drugs. And so what we're able to do in this, in this trial, which is very exciting, we found the right dose. So great, endpoint met. We found that patients responded the way we predicted through the AI. Great, endpoint met. We found that many patients actually survive much longer because of our drug than if they had the other option, endpoint met. And the most important thing for investors and for cancer patients is we now actually know where to go next to the drug. We've got three new trials starting as a result of this trial. And we had over a 50% hit rate, meaning patients responded to a drug and found clinical benefit at above a certain dose. Over that's, 50%. Yeah. That is fantastic. And very rare. With this great momentum, talk a little bit about 
what is next? Give us a little bit of a five-year plan, if you will. Yeah. So we know now that the power of AI is pretty significant. We've done it for ourselves. We've done it for multiple drugs that are now in clinical trials. We actually have done it for other companies, which is really exciting. And so those companies give us access to their IP, rights to their IP, or actually equity in their company, which is really phenomenal. What we're doing now is taking that platform that we know is proven, patent pending, patents issued, publications, and we're opening it up now to the world in rare cancers. We believe that rare cancers shouldn't be the last thing pharmas think about. It should be first, because there are no drugs for majority of hundreds of rare cancers. About 25% of people die from rare cancers. That's a big number. So why are we creating more drugs? It's economically impossible. That's why. The economics just don't work. So what we've done is we've created our platform to make the economics make sense. And we're opening this up now to the world uh, later this month and early next year. And it's going to be a platform that we think can totally, totally change the economics around rare cancer drug development. And the other very exciting thing that we're doing is that we're going to have more data from our trials. Right. And partner those out with larger pharma. So across the board, very, very busy time for Lantern. Very exciting time, actually, for us. Well, with all of this life-changing technology that you guys have and currently are using, what's your biggest challenge right now and how are you overcoming it? You know, I think people always say this across every industry that the challenge is, you know, besides capital, that's always a challenge, right? That's ever, you're never going to say someone who maybe NVIDIA CEO wouldn't say that, but capital is always a challenge. But the real challenge is people. People who will accept that, you know what, this is the right way to do things. People who will join and say, you know what, AI can be used for good for these things. And so some of our biggest challenges really come from inside the industry itself. People not willing to accept that, you know what, we can do things so differently, so faster, and more importantly, with greater precision. And that takes time. It does. And with all of this good news, you also have a spinoff I'd like to mention before we get there, uh, the Starlight Therapeutics. So how is that going to continue this momentum? That's a, that's a wonderful example. Three years ago, one of our drugs, we did not even think worked in brain cancer. It was actually the AI that said, by the way, you might want to look at brain cancers, CNS cancers, actually. And guess what we did? We ignored it. Our team said, well, there's probably some crazy reason the AI said brain cancer. And the next time it came up, as we loaded more data and investigated the drug and did clinical study, uh, the clinical studies and in vitro studies, brain cancer came up again. And then we're like, we can't ignore it. We did the hard work in the lab. And guess what? It works really well in brain cancer. Wow. Yeah. So we've extended the life of two patients significantly in the tr in a trial. So we've already actually manufactured the drug. We've got a fast track designation from the FDA. And more importantly, this drug really works very well in brain cancers, independent of a very important mechanism called MGMT. So in GBM glioblastoma, which is the most notorious of brain cancers, MGMT gets methylated and so that it stops responding to therapies. Our drug doesn't care about that. So it's a very promising drug, and it also works in pediatric brain cancers. Wow. And we've gotten orphan drug status as well as a rare pediatric disease designation. So we're very excited. These, uh, we know we've already manufactured it. It's already in trials. We're going into phase 1B and, and phase 2 with this drug through our subsidiary called Starlight Therapeutics. So whoever owns Lantern is going to own Starlight as we spin it out into a new company only focused on brain cancers the best of success for that. And you you and your team must really sleep well at night knowing the important work you're doing. Actually, I didn't want to say this, but my team and I, we don't sleep at all. We just work. <laughs> well, you yeah, you have a mission. Yeah, we're, we're really, we're very focused, which is really, you, we love what we do. The technology is here today. The need is here today. And the economics need to be transformed. So we're in a great place and we think a great time. So for any of our viewers who are interested in getting involved with this mission, what should they do? Buy Landron stock, LTRN on NASDAQ. All right. Well, there you have it. Pana, thank you so much for this great interview and conversation. And the best of luck to you and your team. That's Lantern Pharma. It trades on the NASDAQ LTRN. Thank you all for watching.